Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash entitled people. In today's episode. My grass or your cul-de-sac? Just had a friend break up over an exclusive party. Can't give a compliment without getting one back. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. My grass or your cul-de-sac? I live on a dirt road and while I own it three other families have the right to drive it so as to allow them to access their property. All good. Where the road curves, over time, gravel has built up well off the road and visually made that portion look like an abandoned parking lot. A sad sight next to my forest of trees and our sparking river. In the blazing heat of August I toiled. I scrapped up the gravel, watered, to force more gravel up to the surface, scrapped, hauled, raked, and sweated. My neighbors shook their collective heads as they saw me working. Three dump trucks of soil arrived, raking, smoothing, and finally joyful planting. A small flowering tree, hundreds of lily bulbs, daffodils, grass seed, bushes have replaced the gravel wasteland. Now my phone rings. Mr. Wonderful, the neighbor at the end of the road wants to talk to me. We meet at my work site. He wants me to explain what I am doing. Fine, I explain. He tells me my work is a waste of time. Fine, I am okay with trying. He informs me that the whole community uses that area as a turnaround. The whole community is him. No one else would ever need to use it. I am still okay. I tell him that if he needs to drive on my grass a bit to turn his boat around I am okay with that. He asks why I did not tell him what my plans were. I come up with some version of what. Why would I check with you about planting grass on my yard and oh, by the way, you have driven past me doing this work for days. If you were so interested, you could have asked. But, now you know, I am planting grass. The mask dissolves. His six-foot-plus self hops off his golf cart and growls, No, I am going to tell you what you are going to do. Mr. Wonderful informs me that the land is not legally mine as he is claiming it through adverse possession. I laughed. I am five feet one inch and was totally terrified inside, but I am not going to cede an inch. Towering over me, with spit-flying screams that I can expect to be in court facing a judge because he is not giving me his property. And the threats keep coming. By now other neighbors have come over to witness the fuss. He keeps at it. When he stops for a breath, I said to everyone, I am so glad you are all here. I am planting grass on my property. If you are called to court to testify, please do not worry about offending me, I will not be angry. And regardless of the outcome of the case, if any of you need to encroach on the grass to turn vehicles around, you have my full permission. Except for you Mr. Wonderful. You are never to touch my property. My daffodils came up this spring, the lilies are sprouting, and no court summons has arrived. Time for a cute little fence of boulders so he can't turn around on your grass. Right? I'd put a fence or some decorative boulders in. My guess is that Mr. Wonderful did as threatened, called his attorney, and was informed of the legal difference between an easement and ownership of the land. After that discussion, I'm going to assume the attorney also sent Mr. Wonderful a bill for the consultation since he probably was as rude to the attorney as he was to you and anyone else who doesn't agree with him. He called code enforcement, sorry pal, no violation. He called the gas company, sorry no violation. He called the police on my pit bull wandering loose, sorry not my dog. NAL. But I'm facing a similar situation. Access easements basically preclude adverse possession for all practical purposes. Access easements only allow access. That is all. Not improvement. Not use other than access. And it just has to allow them access. They can't say they want it to be pretty. They can't say what else you do with it or to it as long as they have access, as crappy as you may want it, to their property. Advice would be to find a copy of the trespass statute and the access easement statute and send a registered mail trespass notice. You can find one online. 
Then, at your discretion, you can actually cause them no end of grief in court. Use big rocks slash boulders as an edge marker of your road. They tend to not fall into the fence category of permitting. Easy slash cheap way of keeping cars from driving on your lawn. Great job handling Mr. Wonderful. It's fun to watch entitled people figure out that they're wrong and there's nothing they can do about it. I'd love to see a pic of your finished hard work and any updates if anything happens. And I gotta say, while I also love the thought of you putting in boulders or some decorative poles and a nice, shiny chain, it sounds like it might also affect the other neighbors, so I can see the logic in not doing that. Time for a security camera if you don't already have one. Just had a friend break up over an exclusive party. I've been friends with a girl I'll call Rose for about a year. We met at a bar and had similar interests, mostly live events. I'm somewhat well connected in my city and am happy to help get people in to watch live performances when they're hurting for money or bring people along to things if I get free tickets. I've noticed that this friend, Rose, was always asking for things and favors and rarely offering much in return. It's on me for not cutting off the friendship as soon as I clocked this about her. Here were some of the signs. One not asked if she could buy me a drink and I'd get her next one, she used this chance to upgrade to a cocktail while what she was getting me was a beer. She asked if this was okay, and considering it was a few dollars difference I went yeah sure go ahead but in retrospect she was taking advantage of the fact that I'd probably say yes. She is always on unemployed despite being multilingual and having a degree, we live in a city where language fluency is important. Her most recent job she was fired from, she was fired from for working one shift, going on vacation, and then showing up at the bar to take advantage of the free drinks. She initially told me they fired her for being too slow. When she revealed the other details, I immediately told her that everything else was why she got fired. She was surprised. For someone who is always broke, she regularly travels. So the friendship ending incident came from a large scale festival that I got to be a part of. One major element of the festival is parties with all the participants and having a pass to gain entry. Last year I had nearly full clearance to all events and parties, I was a participant in the festival and even had a guest pass. I welcomed many folks to take turns with the guest pass, including Rose, who I even managed to sneak her into an event where my pass was already in use and security just waved her along in. Before you ask why I hung out with her, she is a seemingly nice person and is easy to get along with. Usually people like her until she says or does something stupid or inconsiderate, which is often. So back to the events that caused the friend breakup. This year, I am still participating in the festival however with much reduced clearance. I did not have a guest pass, and my own pass was not going to allow me into a very exclusive and fun industry party that many of my colleagues were going to. Rose had a volunteer pass. She was going to many events and even offered me a ticket to a big show. I was honestly about to drop her as a friend but she wanted to thank me for all my generosity so I thought okay fine. The show was great. Then we headed to the party and suddenly, I got very anxious about being rejected from entry based on my limited clearance. Lo and behold, I can't get in. Rose has her volunteer pass, which I insist will get her in, but she refuses to even speak to the guard because she doesn't think so. I felt humiliated, upset, and angry. I was not really feeling like trying to renegotiate entry using a borrowed pass, Meanwhile Rose kept ignoring my upset feelings and pushed me to find us a way in. I got tired of her treating me like her golden ticket and walked off. I ran into a few friends in the same boat. I was in a bad mood, I was not fun in that moment. I ranted about how shitty it was that we were being gatekept from an industry event after all of the work we were contracted to do, and a friend of mine came in with a very kind I'm going home, if you can get this back to me once you're in you can use it, which was very kind, and it worked. I even heard Rose call out to me as I walked in, but I was already aware of her unsavory personality traits and her treatment of me so I stopped caring. Me and my friends all got in, except Rose. She stood outside texting me to get her in, to which I mentioned I couldn't leave the event, even to smoke. I had given back the pass and didn't want to risk losing entry. 
I also couldn't find anyone with a pass willing to do the same switcheroo for her. I didn't want to spend the whole night finding Rose's way in. I figured she would make a friend and find her way in. Nope. There was an after party that I told her about, but by then she was long gone from the area. The next day she told me she was sad I didn't even try to get her in. And that I had just stormed off, came back with a pass, and didn't even update her or anything which was rather annoying and untrue, as I had told her about my limitations and about the after party. This wouldn't have been so bad if she hadn't texted my friend, not hers, saying that she stranded her outside. For context, Rose is not someone who performs in these types of festivals. She does a couple things a year, isn't really involved in our community, and is someone who enjoys spectating. I was annoyed but relieved, I finally had a way out of this friendship that proved to only exist as a pain in the ass. So the day after the festival ended, I sent her this. I really don't see this friendship continuing after the other night. I actually did keep you updated, scroll up. I told you about my circumstance of being stuck inside because the person who lent me their pass was gone and took it with them. And then I told you about the after party, which was too late. I got myself into the party, so did everyone else who managed to get inside. The fact that you couldn't do the same for yourself is not my fault, I don't have magic powers. I've been able to sneak you to things in the past successfully but that time I couldn't and you're being really shitty about it. You also messaged Jenny and said that she stranded you outside. Jenny is a close friend and even I wouldn't have the audacity to speak to her that way. I stormed off because I was humiliated and angry at the circumstances. Thanks for the support by the way. You didn't seem to at all care or acknowledge my feelings. I decided to go home, and then my luck changed. Yours didn't, that's not my fault. At this point, I feel like you only see me as a means to an end, someone who can get you into things and when it doesn't work out this is how you act. Goodbye. I don't care what she says in response. I haven't felt so annoyed by someone who I have lended a hand to so many times. She really did teach me a lesson of sorts, to cut people out before anything too dramatic happens, but once she started speaking to my friends in inappropriate ways I had no choice. I'd like to add another story about Rose. Over the weekend she was watching a show me and a friend from out of town were both on and came along with our group to go get drinks. My friend ordered an Uber XL as a treat to fit all of us. Rose appeared to tell her friend who was biking where we were going, however this friend mysteriously never rendezvoused. We get in the car, get to the bar, and Rose announces she's going home pretty much as soon as she gets there. She lives about a five-minute walk. I was telling my friend from out of town about some of Rose's inconsiderate moments, to which we both realized she only wanted to get in the Uber to go home. She never intended to continue to hang, but acted like she would to get the ride. And that the friend from earlier never showed because she didn't tell her to meet up with us, but was making some excuse for ditching her outright. I am so glad this friendship is over. WTF did I just read? TBH, you sound just as entitled. Honestly, you sound even more entitled than her. Ranting about an event you weren't invited to. Maybe you're not as big of a deal as you think you are. You seem awful and condescending. Friends don't abandon each other at larger festivals. That's so messed up. Your text to her is awful and, honestly, you're on this weird high horse when none of your points are valid she wasn't using you to get in she just felt abandoned by the friend who was her partner at the festival. I'd never be your friend. You did Rose a favor. You question why you're friends with Rose, ID question why Rose was friends with you. Don't really see anything particularly entitled in anything she's done, unless you consider expecting a friend to actually treat you like a friend is entitled. You just sound like a really unpleasant person. It sounds like you don't like her anymore, which is fine I guess. But she didn't really use you or do anything to you. I mean she upgraded a drink and got a ride home? That's basic friend stuff.
Can't give a compliment without getting one back. I have a terrible co-worker Allison who is the most selfish slash entitled person I've ever met. We're at a conference right now and a bunch of co-workers are all staying in an Airbnb together so we get ready in the mornings together. I was pre presenting yesterday so put a bit more effort into my appearance than usual, makeup when I normally don't wear any, a nice top, you get it. Allison complimented me and said I looked nice as I was walking past. I said thank you and kept walking, not thinking anything of it. Allison then replied in a high-pitched voice as if I was saying it, you look nice too Allison I was so taken aback and said something along the lines of sure but I'm presenting today so I wanted to dress up. It was such a small moment, albeit in a trip full of small entitled moments like this. But is it really so hard to give a compliment without getting one back? Wow, it must be fun rooming with her on your business trip. I would never expect to automatically receive a compliment back after giving one. Try giving her compliments that she doesn't expect or want. Thank you. I like your pencil. Thank you. The bags under your eyes complement your shoes. Thank you. The sandwich you ate yesterday looked delicious. Where did you get it? Thank you. You have a nice mom. Compliment something, anything, but don't make it a compliment about her, which is what she wants. True compliments do not need to be reciprocated. Wow, so she only gave you a compliment to get one in return? She's insecure. I never expect a compliment back. But, I have a friend I golf with who always says to me nice drive and her ball is just as far as mine. So I feel I'm forced to say you too. Drives me nuts. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.